Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a review slash comparison of these HO Berkshires. So this video is designed so you can, it's can, it will, uh, we will review each of the engines, uh, quickly review them, but then also we'll compare them uh, in various aspects such as details, running characteristics, etc. And this way hopefully it can maybe help you choose it, uh, help you choose uh, which one you want or, you know, just, just to see how uh, manufacturers have uh, designed to produce these engines, uh, basically an identical engine. Uh, but it's interesting to see how they made them in different ways. So anyways, uh, we have three here, however we're actually comparing two of these because two of them are from the same manufacturer. So uh, from the very back to the front we have, uh, this is a Walther's Proto 2000, actually it's lifelike Proto 2000 um, Berkshire, this is the nickel plate road number 7072. Uh, 772. Uh, this is the modernized version. As you can see, there's a Mars light and there's some other telltale signs, but mostly it's the Mars light. Um, this is from the second run. Here we have another Pro 2000 uh, nickel plate road uh, number 738. This is the first run, however, it has been modified, but yeah, it has no Mars light as you can tell. And yeah, it's kind of the stock nickel plate version. In the very front here, we have a Bachman. Uh, to a uh, to a four Berkshire. This is painted in the Pierre Marquette paint scheme, as you can see here. I'm not 100% sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I'm going to be calling it uh, Pierre Marquette. If you want to correct me, please feel free to do so in the comments. I'm sure you will if I did it wrong. But yeah, this is number one two two five. And if you guys don't know, this is actually the Polar Express. Uh, at least the inspiration uh, behind the Polar Express. It was this engine here. Um, and yeah, so it's quite a famous model. Um, Nickel Plate Road has also, so this has per been preserved in real life, and then Nickel Plate Road also has one that's been per preserved, it's number uh, 765 I believe it is. Um, but yeah, so I don't, unfortunately I don't have one of those because they're super rare. Um, I don't even know if Walder's made one, but anyways, I have two of them here, and um, yeah. So anyways, let's get started. Uh, we'll begin with a little bit of history. The 284 steam locomotive wheel arrangement was the result of designers attempting to place bigger and bigger fireboxes on 282 Mikados. The larger fireboxes needed more support, hence the 284 design. Lima made the first Berkshire with the Boston and Albany A1 class in 1925. Their design was soon improved and proved popular to various railroads including the Nickel Plate Road, Chesapeake and Ohio, Per Marquette, Erie, and others. Being more or less an enlarged Mikado engine, they were commonly seen hauling freight, although some were also seen hauling passenger trains too. Over 20 examples are preserved today, including Nickel Plate Road 765 and Pierre Marquette's 1225. Interestingly, the Polar Express engine was based off of 1225. Alright, and now moving on, we're going to dive into a little bit of detail for each of these, so we'll get a little close-up of each of the engines. And we'll start right here with the Bachman engine right here. So let's get started. So starting off with the detail of the Bachman engine, we'll go from the front to the back, and I'll be sure to uh, note anything in particular if anything comes up. But yeah, so we'll start at the front here. And uh, the very first thing to note is that the headlight is extremely dim. And this is actually due to many reasons. Um, one thing being, the headlight seems to be very recessed, so the actual light's like back here. And then it just shines through like a tube, basically, and shines through the front. So actually, if we get to the, um, if I kind of tilt the camera unprofessionally, <laughs> uh, you can kind of see how um, it, it actually is pretty bright if you look at it from like directly forward. But from, this, from any angle, it just becomes extremely dim. Uh, Sorry about that. And you know that it's, yeah, so it's it's very dim. And also it's, um, well, it's a very sh dark shade of yellow. It's like almost orange, I'd say, honestly. Um, it doesn't really show too well on the camera here because the camera kind of automatically white balances it. But just to note, it's, it's a very orange light, which actually I'm not really a fan of. I actually prefer a light yellow slash almost white color, I think. I think white doesn't look great, so like a slight yellow tinge, but this is way too orange, at least in my opinion. But anyways, yeah, so in the beginning, in the front here, uh, this used to be a Bachman Easy Make coupler. Uh, they put them on all Bachman engines. I, I exchanged this for a McHenry because I think it looks a little better. Um, uh, we have the uncoupling lever here, which does move. Uh, we have these, I think these are flagpoles or something like that, maybe in, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're like flagpoles of sort, but they're common on all Lima Berkshires. Um, there's the, uh, the little handrail that comes with the ladders or walkway. Um, here we have the air compressor housings right here with separate, nice separately applied uh, metal handrail here. 
Um, but this is also some metal, by the way, and that's something you want, I want you to note. Uh, these are all metal formed uh, wire grabs and stuff. Uh, we also have the headlight here, as you can see. It's molded pretty nicely. Um, there's no gap uh, between the headlight and the smoke box front, so it kind of just attaches directly to it, which I believe is, I mean, it's a little bit off, but it looks fine here. Um, yeah, it's molded very nicely. There's some nice uh, painted uh, marker lights. They're just painted white. They don't operate. There's the number boards, and then there's a swinging bell right in the front right there. And that's pretty much for the front. Moving on to the side, we have the builder's plate, which is in a red and white uh, colors. There's some molded on piping right here. We have the separate, nicely separately applied um, piece right here, which is actually really cool because Bachmann's standard line is common for its uh, just molded on detail. But there's actually really nice to have some separately applied detail. So this is separately applied. This is molded on right here, this uh, pipe right here. The handrails are metal and they are nicely formed. They are separately applied, obviously. Uh, here are, this is the uh, pump for the um, Worthington feed water heater, which you can see up here and this is honestly just like a box there's no detail on top of here um, the nice little uh, molded chimney here's a plastic whistle it's painted uh, gold actually I can zoom in a little bit here uh, yeah you can see the nice pure marquette on the side here of the sand and the sand dome which is a massive dome right here there's four inserts up here um, uh, there's these nice um, separately applied actually pipes here I believe these are plastic but yeah they are separately applied these are the sanding lines that go down to the wheels um, and then if we actually take a look at the wheels you can see that there's a really nice white trim that goes around the wheels which looks really nice it's a bit thick but it looks pretty good uh, and then the wheels and the rods are all black and metal um, there's quite a bit of detail down here you can see the Baker valve gear which is I believe what it is um, yeah so everything everything looks pretty good overall uh, we're gonna move on toward the firebox in the cab now Okay, now moving to the firebox area. Now, please ignore this. Uh, if you see my previous video, this is this is not fact from the factory. This, in fact, was uh, the original owner. I bought this thing used, so this is the original owner's fault. But yeah, um, just ignore that paint kind of weird wash color, which you can see right here. Just ignore that. But anyways, so uh, consider continuing to the firebox here. You can see that the firebox is unfortunately mostly molded. As you can see, all these pipes are molded on, and it's also missing a lot of pipes. Um, if you look at prototype photos, there's a lot more stuff going on here, and this is just missing a lot of that. Stuff. Stuff. There's this nice little separately applied bit right here. I'm not really sure what this is called, but yeah. Um, there's also the generator, which is actually very crude. Um, this is a dynamo. I'm not really sure what this is. I, it might be a second dynamo, but it looks somewhat smaller. There's this other piece here that I've seen on many other engines, but I never understood what it was. Um, I'm sure someone will f uh, tell me, but yeah. Um, here's the um, the sand domes, which uh, actually, you know what? Let's take a closer look at that right now. So if we look from the top, you can see the sand domes here, which again are also plastic, and it's painted the same gold color as the headlight, or as the, uh, sorry, the whistle. Um, another thing you'll note is that these walkway treads are just smooth, uh, there's no sort of texture on them. And you can also take a closer look at the si sand domes right here, which I'll also focus for you guys. And you'll see that it's just one piece, these are all molded on, and everything is just kind of molded on. So nothing special, and then if we move on to the front here, there's this nice little, um, patch right here which my camera can't zoom in but yeah actually let me uh, get a little higher there we go so you can see the uh, Worthington feed water heater is just plain plastic and there's a nice little bit of um, you know riveting and whatnot on here it's all molded though so yeah very simple detail um, but it looks okay I mean especially given that it's Bachman and everything like that so it looks actually pretty decent so now let's take a close look at the, la the cab of the engine Alright, moving on to the cab right here, we see the nice, very nicely printed uh, 1225, as well as a little bit of a logo right here, and the white trim continues onward. Underneath the cab, you can see some more molded on detail. It's nothing special, but um, yeah, I think this is where the injectors are. Um, and so yeah, it's very simple stuff, very plain. Uh, and if we take a closer look at the inside the cab, we'll see that the inside is painted green, and there is some basic back head detail, nothing too fancy though. And then one last thing to note is that the thing on the top, the uh, little window or thing here, um, it doesn't move, it's molded on. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention is that the uh, the windows are very nicely made. It is one piece, however the paint uh, gives it a, a, a feeling of depth to it, where it feels like it's actually a very finely molded piece. Uh, it's also missing the deck plate, as you can see there's nothing back here, and there are no grab irons uh, that are around here. So it is definitely missing some detail here and there, but it looks pretty good. 
One thing I like to note is that the uh, smoke box here is painted a graphite color. Now I'm not 100% sure about this in Pure Marquette uh, engines in their paint schemes. I don't believe they are meant to be uh, graphite. I believe they are meant, meant to be black. Um, however, I'm not 100% not 100 sure on that. What I do know is that Pear Marquette didn't use this kind of headlight. It didn't have this visor. Uh, I believe that most, I'm, not, I'm sure there are exceptions, but most of their headlights don't have this visor. However, I do believe that the uh, 1225 here does. So, you know, it depends on which, I guess it depends on which number you buy. Taking a closer look at the wheels, uh, one more thing I want to note is that um, you can see right here, Here's the uh, gearbox. So the motor is around here, and it basically just powers the third wheel here, which powers tr uh, these rods transfer power to the rest of the wheels. Uh, besides that, though, you can see that it's mostly empty down here. In fact, you can just see right through uh, the entire engine here. But there is this kind of weird, like, um, rectangle black box right here that kind of covers it up. So, you know, it's pretty nice, um, but it's just it's just something to note. And on the engineer side of the engine, the detail is built to a fairly similar standard. Obviously there are a few differences, including how there is the extra piece here, which I believe uh, controls the steam. I'm not really sure, but yeah, this piece, uh, you'll see this. It is separately attached, it looks pretty good. Um, and also some other uh, pipes and additional detail, as well as these like cylinders and whatnot. But yeah, it's fairly similar detail, uh, built to a very similar standard, so yep. Moving on to the tender, we can see that uh, on the side here, the very first thing you notice is that there's this really nicely painted crisp uh, per Marquette in a very good looking golden yellow. Uh, I think I really like the look of that. Uh, you also note the uh, rivet detail that are on the sides uh, throughout the entire tender. And then one more thing you notice is that these, um, these white trimmed wheels, they look amazing I think. They look really good. Um, now, I don't know, I don't believe Pierre Marquette had these white painted wheels, white rimmed wheels. I know for a fact Nickel Plate Road doesn't, so I guess that is a, dis a discrepancy on, their, on the Bachmann's Nickel Plate engine. However, I can't say for sure about Pierre Marquette, uh, but it is there, and regardless, I think it looks really nice. It definitely adds a little bit of um, that realism into it, I think. Um, you also note that there's a tender plug right here. There's two plugs that tend, uh, plug into the underside of the cab, um, and... Yeah, so there is some sort of paint chip on here. I do believe it's supposed to be black wire. However, um, well, the original owner kind of messed some stuff up. But yeah, uh, let's take a closer look at the top of the hinder. Taking a look at the top, we can see this really nicely molded shiny uh, black coal. I do think this actually looks very realistic, uh, and we will compare this to the Walders model. But yeah, so it is, I think, in my opinion, fairly... Uh, realistic looking coal as you can see right here and then in the back right here we have this nice metal handrail that goes along the entire thing we have these uh, molded on uh, water hatches and you can see the little handle on here also molded on and then we have a little ladder, ladder that protrudes the rear and we'll take a closer look at that right now looking at the rear we have these uh, this nice, a nice little bit of labeling right here it tells you the tonnage and the amount of water it can hold as well as the uh, number of the engine itself and if we actually focused a little bit further away, you can see there's a rear headlight, and this does operate. It has the actually sa that has the same glow as the front headlight, where it's very orangey. And then we have this ten uh, this uh, ladder right here. And one thing to note about this ladder is that actually, here, let me if I shine a light on it. It looks like it's a it's a um, molded on piece. As you can see, there is it doesn't there's no you know gap between the ladder and the uh, tender. However, for some, I think like it's designed so it's molded on, or like you push it on. However, um, there is this piece that extends past it. However, yeah, there's really no gap between the uh, tender and the um, and the the wall tender and the ladder. So it kind of has that molded on impression. However, I do believe it is a separately applied piece. So that's something to note. Um, I think it doesn't look amazing. However, I think it is a smart design. Uh, I definitely much rather have this than uh, just fully molded on. So, yeah. And then near the bottom, as you can see below, uh, we have the um, we have the coupler. This is a stock Bachmann Easy Mate coupler. We have these really finely molded uh, stirrup steps, and we have this uncoupling lever. Interestingly, there is the wire formed uh, uncoupling lever. However, there are no handrails on either the back uh, nor the front. Uh, right here. There's none right here. So, yeah, that is something to note. However, I think the tender is looks pretty good. So, yeah. One last thing I'd like to note is if you look a closer, if you take a closer look at these trucks, you'll see that they are actually not uh, symmetrical. There's actually, uh, it's actually odd. So, um, if you see the truck here, 
the the side frame here you'll see that like this wheel here this additional piece sort of looks like it joins uh, together with the rest of this truck here um, which is kind of odd but I don't, I don't really know how the prototype worked like that but however you know that this truck and this truck is mirrored so you'll see that this in this truck's case this wheel this piece is kind of attached to here whereas in this case it's this piece that is attached to here you'll see how this like this piece is angled um, however this is actually wrong it should be this this look should be a uh, R uh, replicated on this instead of being mirrored. So if you actually look at the um, Pro 2000 uh, tender here, you'll see how it should look. You'll note that how both of these are angled, or both of these are, you know, facing the same direction, where they're both facing left, but whereas in the Bachman version, it's mirrored. And that's kind of odd. Um, you can just flip this truck around, but it, it is kind of a pain. It's uh, you gotta remove the screw and also the nut that's inside, and then you gotta flip it around and you gotta retach the nut. It's kind of a pain. You have to take out part the entire. You gotta take apart the tender shell. It's obviously nothing major, but I'm saying uh, for the you know for the consumer group that's buying the Bachman Berkshire, they may not want to do that. So it is definitely something to know, and it's also something very minor, very very minor. But it is something that Bachman got wrong. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so moving on to the Pro 2000 engine, uh, as I said, this is the unmodernized version. Uh, the other engine I have with the uh, headlight, let me turn the sound off real quick, I apologize for that. There we go. Um, the other version has the Mars light and it has some other various details. I won't be going into that because uh, this is just a quick review and comparison, so yeah, but anyway, so let's get started. Uh, one thing you'll note is that the headlight here is a much brighter, as you can see, looks very good. Um, yeah, it looks it, it's much brighter. It is a white headlight, and that is because I actually did have to mo uh, change it myself. The actual headlight that these come with stock uh, looks like uh, on my other the other Berkshire, which I'll show you right now. You'll note that it is a more yellowish tone to it. It looks really good, I think. And yeah, so do expect that. Don't expect this light. However, if you can change it to just a, I just change this to a basic white LED. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, the number boards do sort of uh, light up, however, kind of poorly um, and unevenly. Um, in the front here, you notice that the smoke box is actually black. And so this I do know because I do know a little bit more about uh, nickel plate than per Marquette. But um, the per, uh, nickel plates uh, smoke boxes were always black. They were not meant to be a graphite color. Uh, now 765 does have a more graphite -y looking um, smoke box and that I think is because the people who restored it and whatnot and who are maintaining it uh, didn't paint it black but yeah so historically speaking they should be black so this is actually more accurate uh, you'll note that there's a nice little white pinstripe here uh, you'll note that the um, the detail overall on this on this uh, model now there are the uncoupling levers and the wires and everything like that the detail strictly speaking looks finer in fact, I'll take a I'll show you a closer look at this piece right here, and I can compare it to the Bachman version. You know that the Bachman version is just a solid piece of plastic, whereas this has just like fine pieces of plastic. However, there's something to note, and that is that all of these pieces right here, the same things, the uh, flagpoles, I'm assuming, the uh, uncoupling levers. You see, these are all plastic. You see that these don't move, right? Uh, these don't move. Yeah, none of these move. This even this piece right here, I believe, is plastic. So like, it is definitely much more fragile. I do believe these are actually also plastic and um, now the handrails I don't believe are but yeah anyway so everything here is all plastic so it does look good but you it's definitely more fragile because you know wire metal wire you can bend by accident or whatever and then you can just bend it back plastic right here it will just snap so you definitely do have to be careful with that uh, but anyway strictly speaking detail though everything is definitely finer the uncoupling lever looks a little finer a little thinner there's the grabs as you see right here and then yeah everything looks really good here um, and I think everything's really good looking um, the marker lights are not painted they're just regular black it's molded in black plastic uh, the number boards here look pretty good and then the bell also swings as you see right there one more thing I forgot to mention is the uh, working feed water heater you can see there's definitely much more uh, on here um, it definitely doesn't just look like a crude plastic piece it actually looks kind of legit and then also the uh, the funnel here it has this very odd shape where the front sort of protrudes a little bit here and it is symmetrical so it's not like a, a defect or anything like that however I, I, I do appreciate that uh, Pro 2000 went through their way to uh, make that very unique looking uh, shaped uh, chimney instead of the um, Bachman which is just a plain round circle <laughs> um, but yeah that's just something again to note 
Taking a closer look at all the side detail, you know that this is much more detailed than the Bachman engine. For example, this piece here that you remember was previously molded on, as you can see here, separately applied here. The uh, builder's plate is very nicely made, however, it is just a plain kind of uh, yellowish, pale yellowish uh, color, there's no red to it. Um, this is obviously separately applied. One thing I found really interesting was the piece up here, which we'll get a cl closer look at right now. And it is so fine and precisely molded, I really like it. Uh, besides that, you can also see that this piece right here that was previously um, molded on is now a separately applied piece. Uh, if we move on to the uh, sand domes right here, you'll note yet again how much detail there is. I mean, so all these separate uh, sand hoses and pipes are all separately applied. There's little latches up here, a little grab iron like up here. Um, there's little things that pop out from the side here. Um, a closer look at the uh, top of the sand dome, you'll note that these uh, uh, separately applied handrails on top here. Uh, there's a whistle cord right here. The whistle is black, unfortunately. It is also plastic, so I mean, it's really not hard to paint it uh, golden, but yeah, it's also plastic, so it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, and then if we move on, if we actually look below, you see that the sheer amount of detail is insane. These things are very finely molded. I'd argue uh, molded better than the Bachman ones. In fact, we can compare this to the Bachman uh, right now. And also we can move on and you can see that these uh, these uh, hoses continue on below. There's just all sorts of stuff underneath here. This, um, this um, what is it called? This cylinder, this um, air tank here has actual lines coming out of it, which is you don't see on the Bachman version. And yeah, we'll actually continue on here uh, in the next shot. Yeah, so if you look at this firebox here, it is so well detailed. This is all separately applied. That being said, as I said, all of these details are plastic, so it's not amazing as far as handling goes, but I mean, strictly see seeing like looks, this looks great. And then if you actually look above too, uh, you can see that there's the, the generator. Again, we can compare this back to the Bachman version, which, you know, is really crude looking. This thing has amazing detail. Um, I think it's definitely much better molded. Um, and just in general, there's just more details overall. Uh, and then, yeah, so we'll take a closer look at the uh, safety valves just like last time from above. And yeah. From above, we can also see the safety valves here. Uh, they are just black plastic, um, but they do look really detailed. And again, you can just paint them, it's not that hard. Um, the cab roof, again, there's also some nice riveting on top here. And then this thing doesn't open. And then you can kind of see here, I'll actually just get a closer shot of this, but the running plate here is actually uh, textured. There is some. Um, like maybe anti-tread or something like that on top, but it definitely makes it look more real and less plasticky. All right, taking a closer look below here, we'll see that this is the pump here. I believe this is this is part of the feed water heater assembly, uh, the Worthington feed water heater. I believe this is a pump, possibly. Uh, this is where the uh, the cold water comes in, and you can see this molded of this really flexible plastic, which won't break if you you know if you touch it or anything like that. And now, so this piece is actually really well done. Uh, Bachman's, uh, if you remember, doesn't have this. In fact, I'll show a picture of it right now. It doesn't include this, and on the real thing, it does. Uh, on brass models, this piece would be attached to the firebox. It'd be there's some sort of like pipes around here. However, on the Walders version, it's actually attached to the trailing truck, so it actually moves along with the uh, trailing truck. You can see it kind of moves around right here, um, which I think is designed so one, it won't break. You know, if the if you have tight curves, and the trailing truck like pops it off, um, and it's just I don't know. I think it's it's a well. It's it's definitely. I think it looks fine, and it just kind of helps uh, the engine navigate tighter curves and whatnot, and also prevents damage from the to the details. Um, but yeah, I think it looks fine. It's definitely a step up from Bachman's, which is just lacking entirely. Another thing to note is that the wheels actually are. I feel like these are finer. They just look more. They just have more of a finer feel. It's more pristine. You know, it's like definitely more. I feel like realistic somehow. I just guess. I guess just because like you know, it's their their le Bachman's are just somewhat more crude. Although that's just personal opinion. Um, I just think these just look a little better. Um, and one thing to note though is that there are no uh, white trims. And so obviously on the prototype, nickel plate didn't have the trim. However, I believe on 37, uh, 70, uh, 765, they, do, they did have the trim uh, at times just because it just looks better. However, I don't believe the original nickel plate road engines. At least maybe they did, but the weathering and you know whatnot and the war times just kind of prevented them from always applying the white trim. But I think, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can add it if you want, but I think, you know, <laughs> these engines, you don't see them commonly with it, unless if it was an excursion engine like 765, or if it feels like a special occasion. So in, in my case, I'm just running this with freight cars, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. But yeah, you can add the white trim, and it is, I guess, technically missing, although Nickel Plate Road didn't bother really often, so yeah. And then one more thing to note is that, as you can see, there's definitely, uh, 
you can see that there's nothing underneath here. In fact, you can just see all the details under, inside here. But um, there's no, you know, gearbox tower as you can see visible here. And that is because the gearbox tower is actually on the very first driver axle. And it's, I mean, it's already cramped back here anyway, so the fact that they put it underneath here means that there's no just black box sitting around here. Again, it's really, this is really minor, but I do think that the fact that they paid attention to this, like that, is just insane. Um, and that is definitely props to Walders. And looking at the cab, we can see there's more detail. There's this nice little handrail up here. Uh, there's the handrails, the grab irons that go up here. These are separately applied right here. Um, there's this piece that was on the Bachman. Um, these windows actually do slide open. Uh, I'm not going to force them though because they are a little fragile, so I'm going to close them. But yeah, they do actually open and close. Um, and also they have the nice little painting around it. You can see the 738 is very nicely applied. It is slightly a duller, a more dull yellow. Um, you know, less golden yellow, and more kind of a faded yellow. However, they still look good, and you can see the the white tread, the, uh, the white uh, lining that goes around, and there's a little bit of a logo here, which is it's, it's very crisply, uh, you know, applied. But I can't read it with my regular eyes, so yeah. Moving on to the engineer side, we can see there's more of the same great level of detail. You can see this piece here, another separately applied piece, uh, just all the piping and everything like that, and it just looks absolutely stunning. And you can see that the bottom here is also a bit different. Bachman kind of just copy pasted their boiler or firebox, but you know there's definitely some differences in detail on each side uh, for the uh, Pro 2000 version, and I think it looks really good. Moving on, we can see how the engine is connected to the tender. Uh, unlike Bachman's, which if you recall was just two pins and then it was just a metal drawbar, there's actually this really unique uh, plastic piece here. And there's this nine pin plug here, actually seven pin plug here. So this is just one pin, one plug, which makes it kind of easier. And then this thing, I think, is actually an ingenious design. I believe only Pro 2000 and Ather and Genesis or Ather and Genesis uses this design. It's very simple. Uh, you'll note that it always centers itself in the middle, right? And the thing is, when it goes to the sides, it actually extends. But when it goes to the middle, it retracts. You can see that it kind of, I guess it's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, basically when it's in the center position, it's, it retracts. And then on the sides, it actually expands outward. And this is so when you cut a couple of the tender on curves, it will expand outward. But when it's going on straight track, it will, it will you know, tighten that gap uh, more. So I think this is a really nice design. And it's also actually really easy to connect to. In fact, we can actually connect it right now. Uh, basically, there's this, uh, it's plastic, so it is a little more fragile, but there's basically a, a pin that's inside the tender, it kind of just like that, and then you, when you push them together, it just snaps into place like that. And so we're actually demonstrating that right now. Of course, we don't have the plug, uh, the wire plug plugged in right now, but we can just push them together, and it just goes like, like that. And it snaps together, and then if you want to take it out, you just pull it apart. That was kind of a, a bad example, but anyways, yeah, you just pull apart. It's actually a lot simpler than I made it. I was holding each thing with two two fingers. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So it's a really nice design. I think it's really nice. Um, now, yeah, as I said, it might be more fragile because it is plastic instead of metal, but I mean, it works. So, and I think it's really cool. And then one thing you can know is that there's a deck plate right here, which is pretty nice. It also has that nice texture along it, which I'll show you a detailed shot right now. And then also you can see the inside of the engine, uh, the cab. Which let me actually take out my phone's flashlight. You can see it's actually more detailed. Um, I'll get a closer shot of the inside for you guys, and I'll show you right now. But yeah, it's definitely more detailed, and it just looks better. Uh, although it's really minor because it is just in cab detail, but I think every little bit counts, so it's just something to note. And one quick thing I just want to talk about is that the differences between the modernized and unmodernized versions of the Walders Pro 2000 Nickel Plate Road uh, Berkshire. One obviously being the Mars Light, I think that is definitely the biggest difference. The second though being that there are actually six uh, sand pipes coming out from the uh, sand dome, as you can see. It definitely offers more fine detail. And then one more thing is that there's a second generator actually up here, which I'll give you a close up right now. And yeah, besides that, I haven't really noticed many differences besides those, but uh, those are definitely, you know, some changes, and I just want to point them out. Alright, and now if we take a closer look at the tender, we'll see from the front here, there's these nice little grab irons here. Uh, the wheels are not, there's not that white trim, which again, as I said, is actually prototypically correct. Uh, there's these really fine stirrup steps. Uh, I already talked about the separately applied hand, uh, grab irons. These are actually metal, so they're actually quite sturdy. Um, there's these nice little molded on stuff here, which is actually Bachman also has, I just didn't really take a closer look at it. But yeah, um, the front looks fairly similar except the handrails, which I think is a nice touch. Uh, from the side here, we can see that there's also that very nice riveting. Um, and then also the nickel plate road. 
uh, which is again uh, painted really crisply. Uh, now another thing to note is that um, one thing, yeah. So this is again kind of that faded yellow look. It's not very golden. Uh, golden yellow is definitely more of a faded yellow look. So I guess it's definitely more to look like a little bit, maybe a little weathered or whatnot. Um, but either way, and then another thing to note is that um, the black is kind of matte. Bachman's version is a little more satin. Uh, it's more slightly more gl glossy. This is definitely more matte. So it's designed so you can easily weather it or whatnot um, instead of looking like it's brand new out of the box or whatever. So yeah. All right. Taking a look at the end of the tender, you can see that there's a separately applied uh, piece right here. Which again, I didn't really sh really show a model on um, Bachman's, but it is, Bachman's is just a molded line. This is actually separately applied, which looks great. There's the rear headlight, which also works. Um, here's the uh, again the sep the very fine looking stirrup steps. A uh, I believe KD coupler. Uh, and then there, here's the same plastic uh, coupling lever, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I mean, it looks fine. It definitely actually looks a little more realistic because it's finer, but it just kind of, it's, you know, it's easy to break off or whatnot. And then if we shine a light, uh, you can see that the, uh, the uh, ladder is clearly a separately applied piece. So I think the ladder definitely looks a little better on the wall. There's one. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll actually take a closer look at the trucks because um, I forgot to mention a few things and yeah. So besides the fact that the trucks are actually pro in the proper positions, uh, one more thing to note is that these chains are here, which I think look really good. I mean, these just add that, that you know, the little bit of extra detail that, you know, other engines don't have, and it just looks great. And it's, I think it's, it makes it even more detailed than the brass engines. And obviously the brass engines do better in other places, but these chains look so good, and I love them. So anyways, yeah, I think that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it for the tender. Uh, and yeah, so let's go back and continue on with this review.